Hi everyone, this is Mike89. Welcome to the fifth video in my Sonic 3 & Knuckles speedrun tutorial series. Uh, this video is going to cover ice caps, so let's get into it. So through the snowboarding section, you actually don't have to press anything. It's actually faster not to. It is slower to jump on pretty much every part of the slope. Uh, the first action you have to make is not here, but once that snow falls all the way down, all you have to do is make one jump to get out of there. Spinash, spinash again. Um, actually, the first 20 seconds, the first 30 seconds or so, is there's not a lot to the stage until we get to these ramps. Yeah. So, we're going to jump off this ramp, land on this platform. And what we're going to do is try and pause the game such that Sonic's head, or the very top of Sonic's head, we want it to roughly line up with the ba with the point of the spikes here. Now, there are actually three frames this works on. So one either side of this one. One here, and one here. Uh, if you hit any one of those three frames, now what you want to do is now switch to holding right and unpause the game and you'll immediately start moving and you can see that what's happened is you get pushed up on top of the, this block and right now we're in a very strange mechanic of the game which we call slope glitch and this means that we don't interact with the slopes properly and in the first instance of that you're going to see you do a small jump there don't touch any directions yet just hold down when you hit the ramp. And as you can see, you're actually slightly inside the ramp here. You'd expect it to be about here, based on where you can see Sonic being now. But what we're going to do now is, instead of just jumping once, we're going to jump twice. Because you're actually embedded that far into the ramp, jumping once will put you back on where the ramp actually is. And if we frame advance it, you can see that. that the jump there has put us back on the ramp, and now you can see there's a second jump that's actually taking us off the ramp. So it's two very quick taps of the same button to do that. Uh, using the same button is important because it's more likely that both jumps will actually register. Now, so we're still holding down. So holding down on, on that second ramp. Uh, now, we're about to enter this wall. As soon as you do, uh, take note of where you are in the music. Hold left after one beat in the music, switch to right, and then after another beat in the music, switch to left. So the sequence looks like this, left, right, left. And then we're going to go through these rings here. And that tells you that you're on about the right angle. So, still holding left, we're going to continue holding left for most of this drop. So, holding left, holding left, holding left. Now, we're about to go through, you can see I've got an extra ring there, and you may also have heard the checkpoint. As soon as you hear that, either the ring or the checkpoint or both, again, switch to holding right for one beat of the music, and then back to left. Right, left, 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 left left now we get up to may have seen it just there about here there's a there's a big pit and if you go through the normal path with knuckles there's a bridge on top of the pit and the bridge is a sprite object anytime you touch a sprite object while the spri while the slope glitch is active it actually cancels the effect and turns your physics back to normal. Now we still need them, so we cannot, under any circumstances, land on that bridge. So, where Sonic is, is roughly in line with the center of the screen. So, as you can see, if we were to jump now, because Sonic will lose all his horizontal momentum when he jumps, uh, he's going to land on the bridge, and we don't want that. So. We're going to wait just a little bit longer, and as soon as we're convinced 
that it is past the left side of the screen, we now just start mashing the jump buttons. And so I end up here. And now I now there are two tunnels like this, one that Sonic goes through and one that Knuckles goes through, so I don't actually know where I am yet. That's not important. I'll figure it out soon enough. Now, at the third one of these set of tiny little hills after the after the ice block closes behind you, you can see here that there are these tiny little dimples in the hill. One, two, three, four. What we're aiming for is for Sonic to land right in between those last two of them. Because even though you can't see it, there's actually a slight decline there. And that's going to cause Sonic to continue to run on that decline into the ground here. You can see I hit it and then run into the ground. And what's actually happening here is I'm now continuing to hold right. But because I'm in the wall, it's pushing me out to the left. And if I continue to do that, as I go past the left edge of the screen, I will now level wrap towards where the Act 2 boss is. Now, two possible things can appear here. This checkpoint signifies that I am in Sonic's area. If you get a switch there instead, a switch encased in ice, uh, you're in Knuckles' boss area, and that's much easier to get to the Act 2 boss from. All you got to do is hold right for about a second or so, then wait, and then the, um, the tunnel that appears just before the Act 2 boss, as soon as you see that, jump and hold left, and you'll appear in the boss arena just fine. Uh, Sonic is a little bit trickier. I want to now draw your attention to the clock. Right now it says 55 seconds. And we can see the checkpoint, which means that we've identified that we are in Sonic's area. So right now, we're actually stuck in a wall. And we're going to get ourselves out of the wall. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to hold left for two seconds. So once the time ticks over to 57, we can start now holding right for one second until it ticks to 58. Then back to left for one more second. And as soon as you see 59, continue to hold left, but now start mashing the jump buttons as well. You can see there, the screen shifted upwards and then back down. Now that means I've got to jump. This means that I'm now out of the wall. Now, you can't really see very well where you end up. You can see just the bottom of it there. That tunnel there. Uh, where I actually am at the moment, I am in a tunnel that looks just like that one. And I'll show you on the screen what it looks like. It looks roughly like that. Now, what I'm doing is all of these actions are designed to get me down to here, the very bottommost point of the tunnel, which is incidentally the end of the screen. I can't move any further right than that. So at the moment, I'm up the top of the tunnel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump through this tunnel because I still have the slope glitch on. So, if I try and run along the, the tunnel, I can end up stuck in the bottom wall or in the top or in the top wall with no way to get myself out in time. So I'm going to jump down until I make my way down to here. And so you can see from the way the screen shifts that I'm doing those jumps. Okay, now once you see the screen shift up and down like that, now I know I'm at the bottom. Now looking for this. This is the the area where the last large ring in the stage is. So we're right near the end now. As soon as you see that, jump, and we're going to jump down into the boss area. Now, as soon as you see the spikes appear up here, do a small jump. And again, we're looking for a slight incline on the ground here. And now, again, because of, we still have the slope glitch, landing on a slope like that is going to mean that Sonic's going to run up an imaginary hill. Not quite that high, but that's, that's the general idea. So he lands on the slope, runs upwards a little bit, 
And as you get near the top of it, but before you hit the right edge of the screen, jump so as to get a little bit of extra height as well. And so we're now going to do a few Insta Shield hits. We're going to do one, two, three before the platform comes down. Then we're going to jump on top of the platform. And as soon as we do that, we're going to jump out to the left and curl ourselves back around and hit Robotnik from the top. And that will mean that we continue to bounce on him. One, two, three. Like that. So you can see, jump out. One, two. Now I actually start moving to the left here. And it's because the ice blaster that comes out here, that's roughly what it looks like visually, is the size of its hitbox. In reality, the size of its hitbox is about this much. It covers a ridiculous amount of ground, and it also goes into the bottom of Robotnik's hitbox itself, which means that you can actually get hit by it and deliver a hit to Robotnik at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm moving to the left as far as I can to make sure that that doesn't happen to me. And as you can see, there it did. Now all we've got to do is hit the capture and get ourselves to launch base. However, there is one more thing. So, you may have noticed that the game said that I just beat Act 1. Well, that means that the game now thinks it's Act 2. So the timer actually starts here. You can see it's gone to zero, and it will actually count up if you linger on this screen. Uh, what I did there is instead of doing this in one spin dash, which is what you're meant to do, I released the spin dash too quickly, and bumped into the right side of the screen as it was shifting away. And as you can see, that actually does mean the second ticks over, and it does actually count against your time. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you release that spin dash quickly, but not too quickly, and you'll get a sense for what that is. Anyway, that's Ice Cap for speedrunning purposes. So I'm going to take you back to the start and show you what the whole stage looks like without any interruptions.